I'd like to welcome you to the Minnehaha County Commission meeting. I'd like you to um, invite you to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I'd like to remind everyone to silence their cell phones. Um, the meeting documents are available for review on the ledge uh, next to Commissioner Karski. And please contact Carol if you need a listening device. So that takes us to routine business. Um, I consider a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Motion is second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Um, item number two is to approve the county commission minutes from June 13th, 2017. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, item three is bills to be paid in the amount of $628,209.98. Pay the bills. Second. Any comments? Yes, Commissioner Barth. Madam Chair, uh, today's bills include... Uh, about 200,000 for Metro Communications, some of which is passed through. And we have uh, some other considerable expenses with uh, the highway department. But again, this week we have over $20,000 going to outside attorneys on uh, criminal defense. Yes, all right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Um, so we have reports on file with the Rural Ambulance, the first quarter report covering January through March 2017. Uh, Dr. Luther, I thank you for coming. Did you have any comments this morning? Uh, good morning, Commissioners. Uh, Dr. Jeff Luther, your Quality Assurance Director for the County EMS. Just, just a quick couple of things, if I may. Um, I, I provided the, the executive summary like I usually do that kind of just details what we um, have looked at. There were 380 ambulance calls in that time frame. Uh, I reviewed 110 charts that were submitted. Again, um, emphasizing that I receive information and data from two sources, Metro Communications and then the ambulance when they submit their reports, um, of which they're not all the same. Um, so those are sifted and, and reviewed, and then I take out uh, for review purposes the performance indicators that are important uh, to the county ordinance. So those have been reviewed, and, and I'm um, confident and, and happy to report that those performance indicators at the basic life support level have all been met. Um, they're doing a good job out there. A lot of these calls continue to be advanced life support, but there's work underway to to uh, like a collaborative work that's that's working on that so I'm confident that in the future we'll be able to even make that more clear but just a couple of uh, items I wanted to just clarify um, one of these is the uh, dispatch to and route time standard uh, per the ordinance what I review is the services get 60 seconds to acknowledge they got the call and then 10 minutes to respond and we have and I want to be fair to Gerritsen, uh, they're at 80 percent, but that's off this chart. That's the, it says uh, results of quality review. And I would direct our attention back to the appendix of the report details, where if we look at Gerritsen, if we look at their percentage of other calls, now other calls is different from other medical calls. Other medical calls could be the unknown problems, the sick person, uh, the person that fainted or abdominal pain or what have you. But then we also have the other category, which is uh, a, a catch tank of any kind of call that could come in that would require or request an ambulance. Garrison has a very high percentage of nursing home transport calls. So in order to be fair to Garrison, I don't think it's necessary to, um, these calls are necessary, but I don't think it's necessary that they're held to a standard where they have to respond within 10 minutes to a transport. These calls could be anything to an outpatient service such as physical therapy or what have you. Uh, again, it's a necessary call for the community, um, but I, it, it, it's at 80% just because of their higher volume of that call mix. So I just wanted to clarify that. So there's nothing wrong with, with Garrison's response times. It's just the, the, the mix of call types happens to involve those transports. 
And um, if there's any other questions, I'd be happy to address those. Otherwise, it's pretty much the report that, that I've submitted. Uh, very familiar with that. Um, I promised Commissioner Barth about Narcan reporting last time, and um, it's fortunate we have that out there. It's unfortunate that we have to use it. Uh, we've had several instances where we have used Narcan in a field, um, and the outcomes are difficult for me to get because I don't know what the call was. This would have been an altered level of consciousness, and if the call is suspected opiate overdose, then the services now can render Narcan, uh, and also our EMT basic uh, deputy, road deputies um, have been using it. They just used it last month. Um, so uh, again, unfortunately and then unfortunately, we're going to see more and more of this used, but it's certainly a potential to, to uh, impact positively uh, outcomes uh, from this, this epidemic. Um, other than that, I think that's about it. Uh, you will see some P1 increase from, from Paramedics Plus. Uh, you know, they're contracted with the city and they also have a primary service area uh, in the county, but it's a little bit lopsided because they also respond heavily to 500 North Minnesota, uh, the airport, the penitentiary, um, fairgrounds, those sorts of things that are non-city, but they're there. So the, those calls are, I, I'm not sure quite sure, and I don't know if anyone really knows what we should do with those because those are sovereign to the county. Um, and they still respond to those. Uh, so that can skew the numbers just a bit. So if you see that, that's the, the response uh, for that. Other than that, I, I'm excited that, you know, going forward, we've, there's, there's several work groups going forward and, uh, at, the, at the commission's um, uh, discretion which way this goes. But nonetheless, I think what's, uh, what's underfoot right now is very positive. We've gotten lots of uh, good work groups together. And if nothing else, uh, I think we're going to have some good change coming out of this um, that's, that's sensible and reasonable and, and uh, also, I think, cost effective. I mean, if the commission even chooses not to do anything, and I'm regarding and respecting the results of the Fitch study. Thank you. Any questions for Dr. Luther? Madam Chair, I, I just uh, know how hard Dr. Luther is working on this stuff these days, and uh, uh, this whole ambulance uh, stuff has been uh, sputtering for all these years and it's uh, it's uh, boiling these days so thank you very much well, th thank you thank you all right thank you all thank right, you thank for you. coming this morning <coughs> all right that takes us to item number five um, consider a motion to approve routine personnel actions motion to approve second it's a motion and a second any further discussion if not um, an enter uh, all in favor aye, aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. And Carrie? Good morning. I have two special personnel action requests for you this morning. The first is a request to change the title of the Highway Equipment Services Parts Manager in the Highway Department to Fleet Supervisor. DJ's looked at that, and we've looked at the duties and responsibilities as well as the job description, and we feel that that title more accurately reflects the duties of the job. Are there any questions? Yes, Commissioner Hyberger. So is HR supportive of this change? Very much so. Okay. Any other questions? Move to approve. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion passes unanimously. So that takes you to the, your last item, Carrie. My last item is a request for a temporary pay increase of approximately 5%. Um, for Francis Kenicky. He is our mechanic team leader at the highway and he's filling in during the vacancy for the um, what has now been retitled the fleet supervisor position. So we had a retirement in that area. Fred will be taking over. It is standard practice that if somebody's taking over a significant amount of supervisory responsibilities in the interim that you give a 5% increase at this level. So we're requesting approval for Fred. Commissioner Heiberger. Where are we at in the recruitment or in the hiring of the new position? We posted it on Friday, I believe, right, DJ? Yep. Okay. So. Okay. Any other questions? Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to approve. That is our standard procedure in that situation. Okay. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank, Thank you, you, Carrie. That takes us to item six, applications for abatement. Olivia. Yes, we have two applications for abatement representing 2016 property taxes. 
We have RDID 35718 for Beacon Apartments Limited in the amount of $4,188.89 and another for Beacon Apartments Limited, RDID 53684 in the amount of $9,089.73. Are there any questions? Motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Olivia. Uh, item number seven, notices and requests, there are none. Item eight, planning and zoning notices, there are none. Item nine, petition for compromise of lien, there are none. So that takes us to regular business. Um, item 10, to consider a request from the Sioux Falls JCs for financial support of the 2017 4th of July fireworks celebration. Point, point of order. Madam Chair, yes. you forgot the opportunity for public I comment. I did. Nope. So <laughs> sorry. Back to opportunity for public comment. Thank you for keeping me in line. <laughs> Thank you, uh, uh, Commissioner, Madam Chair. Uh, Bob Litz from the Auditor's Office. And today I wanted to uh, present to you uh, uh, Vicki Hewitt, who is our new accounting manager. Uh, we uh, just started Monday with her, and as Kim transitions into the ERP implementation, uh, we'll be seeing more and more of uh, Vicki up here, and so I wanted to introduce you to her and, and uh, just give her a, a mini ha-ha welcome aboard. <laughs> well, thank you. Welcome. welcome. We're very excited to have you on board. I'm excited as well, so thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. All right. So now, though, anybody else for public comment that I'm, now that I'm on task? <laughs> okay. So now we are on item 10. And um, we are glad to have Travis Arneson here today. Um, and we will consider the request from the Sioux Falls JCs for the financial support of the 2017 4th of July fireworks celebration. Good morning, Commissioners. One more time. For time's sake, I will have Edith go over this request. <laughs> I'm Edith Arneson. I'm Travis's wife. And with us today, we actually have our daughter, Grace Arneson, and then our more or less adopted some son, Colton Elbers. Um, the Sioux Falls JCs is a young leadership organization, and these are two young people that have been involved with many different projects that we do, but want to learn more. So that's why we're coming to you after school got out of session instead of beforehand, because <laughs> they wanted the experience. But thank you for allowing us to take time for your continued support of the Sioux Falls JC's 4th of July celebration through past donations through the commission as well as personally for some of you. This has been and is the firework show for the Sioux Falls and surrounding communities. This year marks our 50th anniversary and we're so excited. The 4th of July celebration cost about $35,000 this year to keep it free to the public. The fireworks themselves cost about $16,000, and that doesn't include all the free ones that Lou's are throwing in this year for the 50th anniversary. The inflatables and other things going on for the kids to participate in, to participate in including face painting, Phil Baker, we have a cartoon artist, a hula hoop dancer, that cost is around $4,000. The other $15,000 is spent on food, courtesy carts for the elderly and those who need assistance getting from the parking lots up to the stage. Um, other equipment such as the two-way radios, the EMTs, the security, cleanup, and other miscellaneous items. And in addition to the municipal band playing, we're doing a concert this, this year as well in honor of the 50th anniversary. We're going to be having the singing contractors will be performing before and after the fireworks. I don't know if you've seen them on YouTube, but you should check them out. They're pretty cool. <laughs> and we're really excited about that part of it. None of this would be possible, though, without the generous donations of organizations and businesses in the Sioux Falls area that have stepped up to help sponsor this community event. Some have been partnering with us for the last three to five years and deserve just as much credit for the event as we do. We especially want to recognize Grand Falls Casino, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 426, the IBEW, 
First Bank and Trust, they are major sponsors for the last three to five years. Um, over $2,500 at least for all of them. And then we have littler sponsors, and I don't know if we can put a list up there or not, at some point anyway, but Nordstrom's, First Premier Bank, um, U.S. Bank, Elite Business, Omni Restoration, um, and the list goes on as far as those that have contributed. Another way that we have been off setting, another way that we've been offsetting the cost is through our raffle tickets. This year, thanks to Domino's, the tickets are five dollars each. But through do, through the generous donation of Domino's, you actually save eight dollars when you purchase it. It's good for a large three-topping pizza from Domino's, so it's only eight dollars. So you get three dollars by purchasing a ticket, <laughs> and it, you get a chance to win a thousand dollars thanks to an anonymous donor for the grand prize. At this point, though, we're still about sixteen thousand dollars short. So we would appreciate any a support that you would consider helping us out celebrate our 50th anniversary. And our website is being updated, SiouxFallsJCs.org, to reflect the schedule of events for that day, as well as how to become a volunteer and or sponsor or donor. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact Travis or myself, and our number is listed there, 335-5798. And again, the Sioux Falls JCs. Um, dot org is the website to go to for more information. Any questions? Well, I don't think so. We really appreciate <laughs> you guys coming. This is a great event. I know lots of people kind of plan their whole 4th of July celebration around this event. So we thank you for all the work you guys have done over the years. And, and this should be a great celebration, it sounds like. Carol looked pretty excited about the singing <laughs> contractors, so <laughs> we'll have to. We, we were just on the phone with them yesterday, in fact, and they're very excited to come to South Dakota. So we're excited. Good. All right, maybe next year Commissioner Barth will do the hula dancing for <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> motion? <laughs> that would be a motion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bender. Yes. Um, I just thank you very much, Travis, for coming. You've been coming to these meetings all the years that I've been here, and your family has done a tremendous amount of work in the JCs to keep this um, party going, I guess, if that's what you want to call it, and it sounds very exciting. This year, I commend you on the idea of the raffle tickets. I think that's great, and I'd be interested in buying some raffle tickets. Leave some it's, raffle tickets. Yeah, yeah. Um, but as far as the as far as the county giving money, um, we don't have anything budgeted for this year going in, and, and I'm, I'm sure you're well aware of how we feel. Our budget is very tight. I love the fact that you come because I think it's important to um, tell the community over our TV show that we're looking for funding for this and I think it's great that so many people from our community have stepped up and hopefully more businesses will at this point I in our budget I just don't feel like I can support a motion to um, put more funding for it but I am all in favor of what you guys are doing I think it's a great program so thank you okay anything else I just I would make a motion or we don't even have to have a motion if we is there anyone else I guess that this was to consider a request so I don't think we have a motion so okay. thank, thank you thank very you. much thank you. Mm -hmm. leave some tickets yeah okay that takes us to item 11 uh, to consider a motion to authorize the chair to sign an agreement between the state of South Dakota and Minnehaha County to transfer from the state to the county certain highway right-of-way jurisdiction operational and maintenance responsibilities to the portion of South Dakota Highway 17 and the portion of 472nd Avenue. D.J. Boothy. Good morning, Commissioners. D.J. Boothy, Highway Superintendent. Uh, this agreement has been a long time coming. We've been working on the, the negotiation for this agreement for several years, and it all started um, probably before I started, but the uh, South Dakota Department of Transportation had in their, their long-term uh, vision of, of Highway 17 that that was no longer uh, to be classified as a state route and it should be more of a local collector route. And so uh, they began working with uh, counties south of us and last year they executed an agreement with Lincoln County uh, turning over I think nine miles of South Dakota 17 to Lincoln County uh, so it would be under Lincoln County's jurisdiction. And then uh, uh, we came to an agreement here uh, just within the last couple months 
uh, in Minnehaha County uh, for a similar agreement. Now the, the terms of, of the agreement is, is to turn over the full jurisdiction of the state highway uh, to Minnehaha County. And jurisdiction, it uh, entails not only the legal ownership of the, the property that the highway right of way is in itself and the road that it sits on, uh, but also several maintenance responsibilities. Uh, the maintenance responsibilities are listed out in the agreement um, to include snow removal, pavement markings, repairs and improvements, permanent signing, drainage, access management, utility management, compliance with American with Disabilities Act, and any other things that go along with the ownership and jurisdiction of a highway right of way. Uh, those items that I listed off, those eight items are the majority of the items, uh, the things that we deal with every day, uh, but it, anything and everything you can possibly think of that happens on a highway would be our responsibility. In the negotiations, uh, the way that uh, this works in, in our state is uh, the state DOT uh, will, cont will contact the local agency or the agency such as Minnehaha County that will be taking over the right of way and, and start talking about what it costs to take care of that road section. And, and both the state and Minnehaha County take really good cost accounting records of all of the roads that we take care of. And so we're able to compare and, and, and critique each other's numbers, if you want to say that, and, and basically come to an agreed upon dollar amount uh, for how much it will cost for Minnehaha County to take care of that for a period of time. Uh, using a combination of our numbers and their numbers, uh, we, we came to a, about a 34, 35 year life cycle cost of what we both agreed uh, it will cost Minnehaha County to take care of that road section. And, and the dollar amount that we came up with ends up being about $1.64 million. And so uh, we're 100% comfortable with that number and, and have no uh, second guesses or, or no concerns with taking over this road section. It's adjacent to another part of our road network, and so we're going to easily be able to fit that into our snow uh, removal program, our maintenance schedules. Uh, this road was constructed, I think, uh, eight, eight or nine years ago, brand new, and so it's, it's, we know exactly where it's at in its life cycle, and we're going to very easily be able to implement our, our uh, maintenance procedures. Uh, with this road network or the, with this road section. It's about a three mile road section from the south border of uh, Minnehaha County up to the State Highway 42. And so uh, with that, uh, the, the payment of $1.64 million, uh, we made sure that uh, we included a statement that we, we kind of got from our state attorney's office and the Lincoln County agreement. Uh, there's a statement that reads, that the proceeds, the $1.64 million, uh, will be used for county highway department purposes, including road construction and maintenance, bridge construction and maintenance, facility construction and maintenance, and equipment purchasing and repair. And so the, the reason that that was included in there, and we've had a lot of conversation about this over the last year or two, um, is because uh, when we have funds that go into the highway fund, uh, those are specifically by statute called out for uh, use for highway supervision, maintenance, and repair. And so uh, the facility portion of that is not allowed uh, out of the highway fund. And so we wanted to make sure that this statement was in there uh, to allow for facility construction or, f or costs related to facility cons uh, construction and maintenance. Um, that's what Lincoln County did. They just recently completed their, their highway department building and they used the proceeds from their agreement with South Dakota 17 uh, uh, in the construction of their facility. And so uh, I've spoken about this with, with Kurt, uh, Kirsten Katmeyer, uh, old state attorney, uh, and also our auditor's office. We're uh, recommending that uh, the commission chairman sign this agreement and then also in the, mo in the motion include that the proceeds, the $1.64 million, will be deposited into the uh, building fund. And that's so we don't have to do a transfer later on uh, and, and move the money from the highway fund to the uh, building fund. And then there's no confusion of what money was in the building fund or what money was in the highway fund. And, and we won't have any confusion there. So uh, with that, if you have any questions about the agreement itself, I can certainly entertain any questions. Commissioner Barth. DJ, it looks like there's at least three bridges on this uh, thing. Are they in good shape? 
they're they're in very good shape, and they're not really bridges. They're they're considered structures by statute. Uh, they're large culverts, and they were all replaced with the reconstruction of the roadway. We have inspected each one of them, and and they're in good state of repair. Does the Dakota Access Pipeline go under this? I think that it does. We did not do a utility locate on the on the road section, but now that you say that, I I do think that it does cross it. Yeah. That doesn't worry us. Uh, They'd have to compensate us. No. I'm sure. Okay. It is encased if it is. Thank crossing. you. Is there any other questions for DJ? Commissioner Karski. No. Know how important it is, but Highway State Highway 17, as it was or stands now, kind of begins in the middle of nowhere and ends in the middle of nowhere. So I, I can understand why the state wants to get rid of it or get it off their records, and it probably should be a county highway. Do we read? Um, number this as a county highway then is that how's that reflected yeah our standard practice uh, when this process has been completed in the past and this was a long time ago uh, for example north of del rapids there's old highway 77. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to follow that uh, that nomenclature because we've got our own highway naming system and so this will be county highway 145 mm -hmm. which we've got a a way that we determine that but it'll be county highway 145 any other questions? Auditor Litz, did you have something you wanted to say? I did, yeah. Bob Litz from the auditor's office. And I wanted to, to just say that we support this notion about taking these, uh, depositing these uh, jurisdictional transfer funds from, uh, for, uh, take that money and put it into the building fund under a highway facility account. Uh, would see and the reasons that uh, the auditor's office think that that prudent is currently the highway, highway seems to be adequately funded. Uh, this is also a rare occasion that uh, uh, that we can take uh, money and, and put it into a facilities account. Uh, state law is very prescriptive about the highway dollars and its uses, and Minnehaha County is a rarity in, in as far as counties go in that we do not take any general fund dollars and put them into highway, thereby allowing uh, highway to improve their facilities and modernize them. Uh, we're just in a difficult position in that regard. And uh, the other thing that I've heard uh, said a couple of times today was if we take this money and put it in highway we can take it back out and put it in the building fund I'm not so certain about that status today and we'd need a department of legislative audit uh, in order to do that I think we probably got some pretty strong grounds for doing that but I'm not certain about it um, this situation kind of reminds me a few years ago when the city did the buyback from the state Minnesota Avenue 12th Street and 10th Street ran through and it was the same situation and at that time as I recall it it was about control of zoning on the edges of those highways mm -hmm. taking it out of the state hands and giving it to us more local control as the city and the county group so um, we're recommending that it, it goes into the building fund under an account for highway facilities that would be my motion second, second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. DJ, it looks like you're the next couple ones. So now we're on item 12. Um, consider a motion to authorize the chair to sign a joint agreement between Minnehaha County and the city of Brandon <coughs> for structure 5284-170 Redwood Boulevard Bridge. Uh, commissioners, as you're aware, in 2016, we reconstructed the what we call the Redwood Boulevard Bridge over Split Rock Creek. Uh, which is on the northeast corner of Brandon. There's a picture actually during construction. Uh, we took some aerial photography there. The yellow shading is, is the annexation limits of the city of Brandon. And so you can see that they've annexed uh, parcels that include uh, a portion of that structure, but not uh, the entire structure. And so uh, without getting into too much detail, uh, the annexation process and, and the jurisdictional process for a structure or for a road right of way is complicated and and with this only being a partial annexation of the structure it's not black and white that the city of brandon would take over full-time or long-term uh, ownership and jurisdiction of that structure that being said uh, they did want to have some improvements uh, completed along with the bridge construction and most notably uh, widening to the south with uh, the addition of some sidewalk and so those costs are significant when you're talking about bridge construction because of the actual structure that's needed to support the uh, the bridge or the uh, sidewalk itself uh, we were happy to comply and, and work with the city of Brandon and and make sure that they uh, got sidewalk that will eventually extend out east of of the structure on Redwood Boulevard uh, uh, but we did not want to have to pay for 100% of the cost out of, out of the county funds 
And so we entered in, into some negotiations, uh, developed a draft of an agreement uh, for sharing the fund or sharing the cost of this uh, addition to the project. And, and that uh, agreement is attached to this, uh, uh, this briefing memo. And the way that it reads is, is uh, that the county will maintain ownership of this structure and, and that will continue until uh, further annexation, uh, but the county will maintain uh, jurisdiction of this structure as of now, and we will complete the regular maintenance on the structure. Uh, the city of Brandon will help out with the, uh, the annual cost for that maintenance. Uh, they're gonna pay us $1,000 a year at the end of the year uh, for our maintenance that we have completed on the structure, which is, uh, in my opinion, a, a fair cost. And then uh, for the construction of the actual sidewalk itself, uh, they're going to remit payment to the county uh, $276,360. And so uh, our state attorney's office was involved in the creation of this agreement. Uh, their contract attorney, Lisa Marso, was involved in the uh, creation of this agreement. Everybody's reviewed it. And uh, the city council of Brandon has, or the mayor has already uh, signed this agreement and it was acted on uh, by the city council. So. Uh, today we're asking for your approval and chairman's signature of the agreement, uh, joint agreement with the city of Brandon and Minnehaha County. Any questions, Commissioner Karski? I'm not going to try to second guess um, all these attorneys and elected officials, but it just seems odd to me, and I apologize for not maybe looking at this a little bit harder, but why wouldn't they just take over the whole bridge? It's a brand new bridge there's going to be almost zero maintenance costs for a long time maybe some painting or striping it just seems odd that they'd only want to take over or annex a portion of the bridge have, have you seen this before or is this common? yeah it, it's a it's a great question it's a fair question and obviously it's the first question that that uh, highway department brings up too with with the municipalities that have bridges that are adjacent or, or on their borders um, in the case of brandon and and we've seen this in baltic too uh, there is a small maintenance staff or street maintenance staff, utility staff that typically is employed by the by the agency, and they don't have the resources or the know-how to take care of structures, mm -hmm. and and the financial resources uh, are also a consideration in a bridge like this. It's not nearly as a, a of a concern because it's a brand new structure, uh, but they don't have the staff to go out there and and do the annual maintenance on it, and so that's their biggest drawback is is they wouldn't know really what to do because they haven't been trained on it. And so we're happy to help out uh, with that. Uh, in the case of Brandon, again, uh, they did annex uh, in McCarty Park on the south side of town. There is a structure on a, a city street through the park there. And uh, that is their 100% their jurisdiction. Uh, we will complete the maintenance on that on an annual basis and send them an invoice for our costs. And that's only because uh, we, we perform annual training for our bridge maintenance staff. They're certified in bridge maintenance and, and the city of Brandon, their public works staff is, is uh, more trained for manholes and street maintenance and that kind of thing. So um, going back to your original question, I think it's just, uh, uh, this is our business, this is our, our wheelhouse and, and it's not necessarily theirs at this time. And so it's, it's easier for both parties for us to continue doing the maintenance and then, then just uh, paying for a portion of it. Okay. Thanks. Commissioner Barth. I uh, called uh, Superintendent Boothy on this issue also, and it's, it looks very odd there, that, uh, but it's apparently the parcel that determined the uh, line that has been annexed. And uh, I can see why attorneys might favor it, because uh, th there could easily be a dispute over whose side of the, uh, were they breaking a city ordinance or a county ordinance? Uh, when they threw that empty uh, pop can on the street. But I also know that on the west side of Sioux Falls that the city of Sioux Falls annexed the right of way of Maple Street all the way out to where they uh, built uh, uh, McGovern School. And I, I really would feel more comfortable if, uh, you know, if they would have annexed this whole section of the road uh, the right of way and uh, you know, contracted with us to uh, do the maintenance. I just, you know, uh, if 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 Dean was on the south side of the road and I punched him by standing on the north side, is that am I violating a county or a city uh, ordinance? Uh, we'll let the lawyers and judges figure it out, and I bet that it would take a lot of them. 
Mr. Uh, Heiberger. No comment. Um, I, I will support this. I'm just wondering if the reimbursement amount that the city is going to pay the county, will that automatically go into the highway fund, or do we need to have a motion to support that? those funds be going into the highway department I think that the motion today should include that it goes into the highway fund uh, we discussed this over the course of the past week hoping that there was a chance that we'd again be able to put it into the building fund or somewhere else mm -hmm. uh, but because this is a, re a reimbursement basically of a direct cost out of the highway fund I think that it's best to put it back into the highway fund okay. I'll make a motion to approve this uh, agreement with uh, reimbursement amount from the city of Brandon going into the highway department second um, Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. I reluctantly, aye. Okay. Any opposed? Motion passes basically unanimously, I think. <laughs> so. All right. Thank you. That takes us to item 13. Consider a motion to authorize the chair to sign an agreement with the South Dakota Department of Transportation for 2017 pavement striping program. Do I have to read all the numbers? Good. DJ. All right, commissioners, uh, every year the DOT coordinates with local governments across the state uh, to provide striping, a striping program. It's, it's basically a, a benefit to have one very large contract for striping in a region and then uh, have a contractor uh, go through that region and stripe all the roads rather than everybody doing their own striping contract. And so uh, the way that they calculate uh, sharing costs and things is based off the funding availability and the amount of miles that actually need to be striped that year. What they've done this year is they have given us a total estimated project cost of $266,265 and that's to stripe every single road mile on our system with about 365 miles. Uh, the program limit, the amount of money that the, the uh, state will share uh, for our participating cost is $98,036.97. So that leaves us with an estimated uh, uh, project cost uh, out of the county is $207,442.90. And that might change a little bit depending on, on the miles that they actually end up striping based off of our construction projects that we have active during the, during the project. Uh, but this is a good program for us. Uh, they take care of the coordination with the contractor, which would be a large uh, burden on our resources with our staffing and they and then they also process payments and everything else and so they they essentially send us a bill uh, at the end of the project for how much uh, our cost share is and so uh, we're happy to participate in it we get a little bit of financial help out of it uh, but the biggest thing is just we don't have to spend the resources to get the project done so uh, asking for your approval and signature on the agreement with the uh, DOT for the 2017 pavement striping program motion to approve oh. I'll second it, and I just want to question, just to clarify, DJ, the $266,265.08, that is just our county's striping. We're not sharing it across the entire statewide system, correct? That's, that's correct, yeah. There's a, a region that they're performing this project in, and I think their total budget in the region is $833,000. So okay. uh, of that $833,000, I think we're around the two hundred and sixty. $6,000 mark. Any further discussion? Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, DJ. Thank you. That takes us to item 14. Consider a motion to authorize use of the budgeted grandstand improvement funds to replace the hand railings at the fairground grandstand. Mark Krenz. Good morning, Commission. Mark Krenz, Facilities Department. Um, I revisited the proposals that were brought forth last Tuesday and to get more clarification, um, I couldn't get an apples to apples quotes because I had one company that wanted to replace the whole fencing structure. I had one that wanted to just put supports on the ones that were rusted completely off. And then I had one that wanted to just fabricate all the supports and then we would have to find out find somebody to um, install them the issue now is the the time constraints um, American fence is the company that wanted to redo the whole fence and they could get it done by the fairgrounds uh, by or by the time that the fair starts this year um, they were at twenty three thousand four hundred and twenty seven dollars and that's cut the existing ones off put new ones on painted everything 
Um, Sunderman was one of the other ones that could get some of the work done by the fair time. Um, what they would do is they would just build some supports. We would go locate the ones that were in most need of rusted off or whatever that we wanted to replace, and then we would have to come back at a later date, paint them, add the rest of them, or whatever we wanted, we wanted to do at that time. Um, I was out there uh, last week, and I looked at them, and it's not only where the, the posts go into the mortar, but that's rotted off or rusted through, but it's also where the top rail meets some of the verticals are starting to rust. So I don't know if uh, putting supports on is the right thing to do because I think eventually it's just going to all have to come down anyway. So um, we have the, the funds available. Um, I'm going to recommend replacing the entire fence with American Fence Company. We can get it done by the fair and we won't have to come back and keep banding band-aiding it every year so are there any questions for me any questions <laughs> motion to approve second motion in a second all in favor aye, aye. any opposed motion passes unanim unanimously thank you okay that takes us to item 15 um, carol muller good morning commissioners carol muller commission administrative officer before you is the annual contract that we receive from the state of south dakota this is reimbursement from them for the detoxification program that we do in order to access these dollars we um, need to be accredited with the state of south dakota which we are we just had a reaccreditation last year i th it was either i think it was last fall is when it was but they passed with very good scores and uh, part of that is that we're able to submit for reimbursement for those people that meet the qualifications that um, the state has. Any questions that I can answer for you at all regarding this annual contract? Any questions? Doesn't appear so. If motion not, to approve. Second. Okay, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, that takes us to item 16, Minnehaha County Commissioner Liaison Reports. Is there any liaison reports? Madam Chair? Yes, Commissioner Bunn. I would Bunn. just say that as a, uh, uh, as a group, we've been meeting on ambulance issues, and uh, uh, I kind of referenced that earlier with Dr. Luther, and we had some pretty extensive discussion over emergency management, and uh, I think that whole thing is going pretty well. Good. I think we'll hear more about that at budget next week. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any anyone else? Okay. That takes us to item 17, new business. Is there any new business? Mr. Litz. Bob Litz from the auditor's office. Again, uh, a while back, I, uh, I I came in under new business and uh, told the commission about efforts to uh, certify some new uh, uh, equipment and software. Uh, that the state of South Dakota needs, Minnehaha County needs it in particular, and uh, uh, we've been successful with that process. Last week I was out in Pierre for a few days. Uh, we did the certification process, and then the State Board of Elections, of which Maggie Gillespie happens to be on, uh, also approved that. And so uh, we're going to put in a little bit of time. We've got a meeting in February to go over Minnehaha County's needs and also a testing session. Uh, Jason Turing from IT came out there with us and was very interested in the process. And uh, overall, things look pretty favorable, but we still have to test it and put it under a load. Uh, there's, a, there's a world of difference between running a couple hundred ballots, uh, 25 at a crack through one machine, and putting the load on it from three machines like we do here in Minnehaha County. So uh, more to be revealed, but uh, good news so far. So. Okay, thank you very much. Chair, could I ask Bob a question? Uh, absolutely. Bob, uh, you know, you didn't do it, but how did the city, uh, the school board election in Sioux Falls uh, go in, in your, uh, you know, they kept you out of the out of the box, so to speak, on it. Did it go all right, do you think? Well, uh, apparently, I didn't read about anything in the paper, so they either got a pass or they did well, so. Thank you. Other questions? All right, thank you. Is there any other new business? Any old business? Okay, if there's no old business, I'd entertain a motion to go into executive session for personnel. That's my motion. Second. Okay, there's a motion, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. All right, thank you. Thank you for coming this morning, everyone.